Hello and welcome back to Harkis CGTV. In this episode, we're going to talk about 10 things that you should do if you want to be a professional footballer. things that you should do if you want to be a professional footballer. 10 things. Big things, of course, like we said in the last video, there of the 10 things that you shouldn't do, there will be other things as well. But these are our 10 that we've looked at that we think will help you the most. So let's get into it. Number one, thoroughly check the person that's contacted you or the person that you're contacting. So if you see an advert on a group in Facebook that says we are running trials, check that person's profile. Have a look, see if they're serious, see if they look trustworthy, look at their email. If their email is a Gmail, they're probably not serious, they're probably fake, they're probably scammers. And there is a lot of scammers out there and you need to make sure that you're looking for them. So check their email, check their page, click on their profile. Do you want to be getting information from this person? Does this person look like they work in football? Do they have pictures that say they work in football? Have a look and find out. Research the person, have a look, make sure you're not going to get scammed. Number two, this is hugely important. Make sure that your Facebook profile, Instagram, emails you send, anything, make sure it represents you, the best you can be, the best person. So you should have pictures of you playing football, videos of you playing football, information about you wanting to play football, going to trials, writing up tactics, any information about health, Make sure you make yourself the best that you can be. Don't have things about selling fake medicine or selling fake health benefits or scammed fake clothes or anything else like that. Make your profile look like the person you want to be the most. Number three. This is kind of being touched on in the last episode of what not to do but it's kind of this in reverse basically what we are saying is make sure that you contact people in the right and correct proper manner say dear blah 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 try to find out what their name is or use the name of the company put yourself across well do not say hey dude or anything like that Contact them in the best way that you can. Make yourself sound as professional as you can. Number four, this is hugely important. Have a playing CV or and playing video ready to show to anyone that asks for it. Doesn't mean hand this to everyone and send it to everyone. Have it ready and say in your email or your message that I have a playing CV if you would like it, I can send it to you. I have playing footage if you would like it, I will send it to you. Have this ready. This I understand sometimes having the playing, C, um, playing CV with a video can be expensive, but having a pl uh, an actual CV written down, this also helps a lot. The details on this we will go into in another video, but you need to start putting one together to understand what coaches and scouts are looking for. This is a huge help for you. Number five, if you're on the internet, you have Google. If you have Google, you have Google Translate. So if someone contacts you, uses language you don't understand, uses a term you don't understand, Google the term, find out what they mean. Do not guess, and certainly if it's in another language, and or you cannot speak the language that that you're contacting the person in, use Google Translate to find out better ways to speak to them. Do not expect them to have to speak your language when you are the one going to them for help. Number six, be patient, be patient. I understand, everybody understands that being a professional footballer is the most important thing to you but the person you're contacting, they have other players that they have to work with. They have sponsors, 
they have football clubs, they have agents, they have a whole business of other things that they're dealing with. So be patient. Number seven, be respectful. Contact them in an appropriate manner. Be as nice as you can, be polite, understand that they are busy, give them their place when you're speaking to them. Do not assume that you're speaking to them like it's your best friend uh, in the street. Be respectful and understand that when they are giving you advice, the advice they are giving you is qualified advice because they know what they're doing. They understand the process and you might not understand the process. So be polite, be respectful. Number eight. So I said be patient. That doesn't mean that you just sit and you do nothing. For number eight, I would say to you, research as much as you can about the person that you're speaking to when you're waiting for them to come back to you. Because that way, when you speak to them, you can mention things that you know about them or you know about their company or you found out what football clubs they work with or what other players that they have on their roster. This shows that you are interested, it shows that you're dedicated and it shows that you take time to learn not only for yourself but also the people that you're working with. So this is important. Make sure that you do research on the person that you're speaking to. Number nine. Okay, so you took pictures, you have videos. Is that it done? No. Continue to take pictures, continue to take videos. Not just of you playing. Maybe you're in the gym. Maybe you went out for a run. Maybe you're on the running machine. You're on the, on the bike. Take pictures. Let people know that your health and your fitness is important to you. If I'm speaking to a player that's on the other side of the world, I don't know what they're doing all day, but if they are posting pictures of them in the gym, I want to see that. I want to know that they are taking their fitness seriously. Number 10. Okay, finally the last one. And like I said, there's probably more as well. There's more that will come up. But this one is our number 10. If you have waited for a week and a half to two weeks and you haven't heard back, this is when you can contact them. Show that you are keen, not overly keen, but show that you are keen and you want to find out if they got your information. Ask them when you contact them again, is there any other information I can provide for you? Would you like more game footage? Would you like more pictures? Do not send all this stuff to them. Ask them if they want it. Remind them that you're interested in working with them and that you will take a step back and allow them time to get back to you. But sometimes agents are very busy and emails move further and further down. Sometimes that little reminder is appreciated. Don't be too pushy, but send them an email just to remind them maybe a week and a half to two weeks later. Okay, so that was our 10 things that you should do if you want to be a professional footballer. Like I said, there's other things that you can do as well, but those are the 10 main things based around social media and email. Of course, we're gonna look at other things that footballers should do if you wanna be a professional footballer. Maybe you are already a professional footballer and you want to get back into playing football or you're between club. So maybe not all of these points are specific to you. Some of them are, some of them won't be. And don't forget also, check out the 10 things that you shouldn't do if you want to be a professional footballer. Thanks again for listening. This is Harkis CGTV giving all that information to aspiring footballs all around the world. Remember, look for us on Instagram, on our Facebook, on our Twitter. Like, share, tell your friends. Any questions, any other questions you may have, put them down below in the comments. Let us know, give us a thumbs up give us a thumbs down. We're here to try and help. <laughs>